I want to bring your attention to one thing when we navigate from our home page to any one of our product pages. I have the network tab opened in my console and I'm specifically looking at the XHR and fetch tab to see the requests that we're making, the network re requests that we're making as we navigate from one page to the other. So if we go back, we can see when we land on the home page, we're making our request, we're hitting our API slash products endpoint to request all of our products data. And if we go back to our individual product and then go back to home, we make another request every single time. We're doing this regardless of the fact that these products haven't changed. And since we're making requests from a static JSON file, it's probably not going to change too often for us. So what if there was a better way to request this data instead of making a request every single time for the same exact data? What if there was a way to know if any of the products were updated and only then make a request for them, otherwise to save the current data that we have? Instead of making a normal HTTP request using the library Axios and useEffect specifically, instead of using the use effect hook, which will run every single time our component mounts, we can use a better library that we've already brought in to handle our, our requests. And that is the package React Query. What's great about React Query is that it's a lot more concise to write across all of our components than using the use effect hook as well. I'm just going to comment out what we have here. And first of all, to set up React Query, we have to go to our app component. And we'll need to grab a couple of things from the library React Query. We'll need to import the query client provider as well as query client from React Query. So we want to create a new qu query client put it in a variable of the same name. We'll say new query client. And we're going to use the query client provider. We'll use this context provider that the package provides and pass it directly a client prop, which will be set to query client. That's This is all of the setup necessary for making sure that we can use React Query in each one of our components and that it can use all of its tools, such as caching, caching our requests or saving our requests to our advantage. So if we save app, we can head back to product list. And to make a request with React Query, we can use what's called the use query hook. So we can import that. And it first of all accepts a key to kind of separate each one of our queries to keep them separate from one another. So React Query knows which one to update, which ones to refetch, etc. So we're going to give it the name products. And the second argument is the function that's used to make the request. So for this, we can simply write an inline arrow function and say Axios. We don't have to use Axios.get. We can just say Axios to do the same thing make a get request to slash API slash products. And then to resolve the data, to resolve the promise, we can do so exactly as we did before by from res getting data and within it the products property. And now instead of needing this react state hook, this react state variable, we can immediately make a get request and we have our data returned to us within an object as the property data, which if we use a colon, we can rename to products to make it even simpler. So now if we delete all of this commented out code, we can see how much simpler our component becomes to fetch this data. And when we save and flip back, we can see this error cannot read property map of undefined. Why? Well, it takes a certain amount of time for products to have an actual value. At first, it's just going to be undefined. 
It takes a certain amount of time to resolve this request. So fortunately, useQuery is aware of that and gives us an isLoading property. So all we have to do, if we're in the process of fetching these products, we can just have a conditional if is loading, then we can return something. And I've created a component for us, this loading spinner, that we can always show when we're in the process of fetching our data. So we can import loading spinner, and that will come from one level up, components, loading spinner. And when we save, you see very briefly our spinner. We do fetch our products for the very first time. And if we clear out our requests and say go to an article and then go back, we see, yes, that we are making a request in the background, but it's not the same type of request. And this is something that we can control using React Query. It makes a request, but notice one particular thing. We don't see our loading spinner again. What React Query does is it attempts to serve all of our data in the cache, the data that it saved from this previous request. It knows this, this request and what data it has associated with it. And so it immediately shows us what it has saved, and then only in the background updates it. This is as compared to using conventional hooks like the use effect hook to make all of our requests. We can make our request to our API in a much smarter fashion with the use query hook, and it's what we're going to be using across all of our components within our application to interact with our Node API.